Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers, welcome to your timeless uh, romantic soulmate contract read. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short. Professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998, author of Words of Grace from a Professional Witch, available on Kindle, link in the description box, creator on Patreon, patreon.com slash drawing the circle. I'm the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angelo Lions, but you can call me Mal. Hey, hey my Scorps. <laughs> My eighth housers, uh, my fixed water signs, hope you are well. Uh, it is contract time. I was raised by a lawyer, I know how to read a contract. So if you are new to the channel, there's lots of links in the description box uh, explaining the difference between a, what a twin flame contract is and a soulmate contract flame, uh, a sorry, a soulmate contract um, is uh, uh, going to thumbnail it real quick for you. The bottom line of a soulmate contract is you help each other heal through a pre-incarnational agreement called the soul contract, uh, even if you haven't met. Uh, it's a vibrational thing. Uh, you help each other heal. They're not all romantic, sexual. My mom and I have a soulmate contract since birth my birth, uh, uh, but obviously not romantic. These, however, are the sexual romantic ones because they're the hardest. Family is family. Hard to leave them. You can take them and leave them, but hard to leave them because that DNA thing, right? <laughs> Genetics. But lovers may come and go. Uh, that's why I do the Path of True Love readings, which are about you specific, but this is involving somebody else. So, uh, it is a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Check your other signs in case you've got more than one romantic thing going on. Or, you know, your moon is going to take it differently than your sun and your Venus, etc. Uh, but we are doing it like a contract. Party number one over here, party number two over here, and in the extended, we will be developing uh, what I call the center lane, the state of the contract, uh, I, where they are, what clause in the contract, chapter in the stories, track on the album, however you want to see it, where they are in this. Um, so uh, there is an extended that is on Vimeo, uh, uh, Vimeo On Demand, you can pay per view, or all of my subscribers on Patreon get all of the extended readings past, present, and moving into the future, just saying. If you're into it, check it out, we're doing a lot of other cool stuff there. So, both feet on the floor if you can, focus on your breath if you will. Uh, I will get you the clarity, guidance, and grace on, really, let's be serious for a second, the planet needs as much love on the planet as possible, at least at the time of this recording. We always, though, uh, with war and a lot of division going on on the planet to bring the energy of uh, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate contracts onto the planet feels almost pioneering, because I don't think we've had much of it on planet Earth, right? So think about it, if everybody was hooking up with their... <laughs> With that, right, there would be no time for war. There would be no time for violence and pain. So you do you, I'll do me, and let's help heal the planet with love, shall we? And get our stuff touched in the process. You are, after all, a Scorpio. Please take a nice deep breath. That was a solid segue. Still point. Yeah, I do these readings for clients all the time. So here we go. Using the Caroline Mace Archetype deck, I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine, the angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, uh, ascended masters of romantic soulmate contract law, the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension above, eighth chakra uh, and above. And then in the extended, we've got Archangel Michael, we've got Kuan Yin, we've got the Pantheon of Pantheons, we've got the spirit animals and totems. we got a lot going on in this read, please. I need three cards for the Scorpio Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers watching this video receiving this reading. One for party number one, one for party number two, and one for state of the contract, which we will not flip over in part one, will be the first card we flip over in the extended. So who do we got? Party number one, eighth chakra dynamic hovering over their head. Let's just put that one there face down. How about... Uh, 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 party number two in this happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract. And I promise, I vow by all that I am that I will not flip this card over until we are recording the extended reading. State of the contract, where are they? What uh, chapter of the story? What 
a scene in the movie, what clause in the contract? For this happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying Scorpio soulmate contract. We are dealing with a shapeshifter and a slave. Wow. Okay. Um, the thing is, is that both of these are wild family card archetypes. A wild family is the one where the rest of the wild card, is, there's the masculine, the feminine, the divine, the healing, the, right, the creative, the action, the survival, right? There are nine families, I'm sure I'm missing one. Um, the wild cards are the ones that don't fit in anywhere else, so can really show up in any way, shape, or form. Uh, very dynamic, though, so let's talk about this. The shadow attribute written Archetypes are neutral. It's a spectrum from shadow to light, pain to peace, lead to gold. I like the lead to gold uh, um, uh, metaphor uh, for spiritual alchemical purposes, which is what contracts are for. It's what healing is. So the shadow is what you don't want to deal with within yourself, your own energy field. Or if you do know about it, you don't want anybody to know about it. This is the content you're helping each other heal. You heal yours. It's helping them heal theirs. And because it's in the same archetypal family, I find that interesting. The light is what you're shooting for. What you will be able to not just manifest within your own energy field is a great soul power to develop, but then that contributes uh, to the ongoing relationship. So the shapeshifter, Sam Merlot, white courtesy telephone, uh, shadow attribute, projecting any image that serves your personal agenda in the moment. Look, it's, it's fronting, it's posing, it's being a liberal in one room at a party, crossing the hall into a room of conservatives, and now you're a conservative, right? And then you're pro this, and the next room you're anti that, right? So it's playing. It's being a player to an extent, shape, uh, shifting your shape as needed. Uh, the light attribute, skill at navigating through different levels of consciousness, ability to see the potential in everything, and that's the same person being clear about who they are in a room full of liberals and like seeing the potential in all sides of what's being talked about. Okay, I don't agree with that, but I can see where you're coming from, right? Then crossing into another room and being in a room full of conservatives or pick your polarity, right? Pro, con, what have you. Uh, you put that together with a slave archetype. Now, slave is a very triggery word. There have always been slaves on planet Earth. Every continent has had them in some way, shape, or form, literal or symbolic. I mean, it's scriptural. How far back do you want to go? <laughs> Leviticus. <Yeah. laughs> right? Exodus. Sorry, Exodus, not Leviticus. Oh, my God, I got my butt. I'm a witch, but I'm well read. Um, so this is an incredibly powerful archetype and it's gold, but you got to look at the shadow here. Uh, giving your willpower to an external authority out of fear of making your own choices, right? So it's abdicating responsibility for the choices that you can make but won't. You will let something outside of you horizontally do it where the gold is doing it vertically. Surrendering your power of choice to the divine with complete trust. It's a slave to God. Now, I'm not a slave, I'm a servant, I have choice. I don't have to do this work. <laughs> I could have been a lawyer. <laughs> Family. Right? Woo! No, 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 no. When it comes to these relationships, it is very easy to feel powerless, and it is very easy to feel like people aren't being authentic. So you shape shift a little bit, and uh, maybe you let things ride rather than act on your intuition. But to see the sacred beauty, the potential that's actually going on on this if you're the shapeshifter, and you may not know that yet. You might have flavors of both here. Um, but are willing to really surrender this to the divine, the sacred truth of the throat chakra is surrender your will to God. I say the divine because it covers a lot more that way. It takes it out of gender. Uh, 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 but thy will be done, so mote it be, for the well-being of all with harm to none, as I will it, so let it be done. I was like, this is what I want, but you show me, I'll do my best. And in that, the slave becomes the master. Yeah, the spiritual implications here are pretty cool. I like it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take Daughters of the Moon, 
uh, five of them on this side for the crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart, right? So this is hovering over the head of somebody. This is being affected by that, what they attract, what they repel, their internal world, their feminine energy, their goddess dynamic, their yin dynamic, daughters of the moon, feminist deck. We're going to do the same on this side. Five cards, fire, earth, air, water, spirit. Four, the one with the slave, archetype, mythic tarot, lower three chakras, root, sacrum, solar plexus. In the extended readings, I swap decks so you get the full eight chakra elements spread for both sides. Let's do this. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. As I call upon my goddesses of water, the sign of Scorpio powers of the West, please. Five cards in clarity. The elements spread for the shapeshifter in this Scorpio collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying, soulmate, contract, in potentia, in process. What is the element of fire for the shapeshifter? What they yearn for, what they burn for, what their hearts desire in this contract. They want a stable foundation of the three of pentacles clay woman they want to get their fingers in the clay they want to make something mutable right clay but soon it will go into the kiln the fire that's depicted over here on this side of the card right they want to get up in this they want to be like they want to get some physical tangible now this is heart th third eye crown so this is like a like this it's like i know that we can they can feel it it's not just an emotional thing it's a visceral thing inside of them that says yeah i want to do this i want to take the water of emotion and the earth of form and uh, uh, mix it together, get my fingers in the clay, sculpt something, and then when it's ready, move that into the stability by putting it in the kiln, the oven, to tur turn it from something mutable to something fixed. They want a solid foundation. What's their element of earth? The fuel that feeds that fire to manifest and ground uh, their heart's desire in this soul contract with the slave archetype. Well, what they've got is great hope great spirituality alignment the card of the star to me the highest vibrational card in the tarot regardless of artist because the moon is here the sun is here the star is way up there so we're going to talk attitude uh, altitudinally Al does is it altitude at that point it's outer space right uh the star alignment when it's a major arcana chakra heart third third eye crown it's all four where this really speaks of the wisdom usually i would say here because it's element of fire like you know they know what they want um and it and it is a good solid not a beginning but a foundation to build upon it's a three not a one uh so this is heart third third eye crown they're lit they're lit up they're inspired of course the wish card um, they want this, but they want it in alignment, right? They want it in a way where it's so like everybody's single, right? Starting off or something like that, right? So it's like a nice thing that we can get creative with this. Not too many uh, uh, roots in the garden that have to be pulled out from last year, right? <laughs> Until that garden, get that soil ready. I'm so ready to garden, just waiting for the first 70 degree day. <laughs> All right, my goddesses, their element of air. What are they thinking about this contract, uh, this shapeshifter? Uh, to this slave, what, what, is, what is their predominant thought here? Heart, third, third eye crown. And they're thinking about security, the four of pentacles. So they want the three so that they're thinking about the four. They're really thinking about that, um, well, uh, the four women going to the tribal well, uh, with uh, urns, jugs, water jugs, carriers, right? And it's the well that never depletes. Uh, again, when it's a, a Earth's or a pentacle on the inside, it is this sense of wisdom, but it's almost like they're visualizing. It's like, oh, that nice stability, right? That four of pentacles. This is somebody, I think, who's pretty serious. Um, you know, shapeshifter, they may not play it. <laughs> they may not put that on their face all the time. Because particularly if you're just getting to know each other, that can be a bit much. Um, uh, and whether this is what they want generally in a relationship or what they want specifically with this person, you can only tell that if it's a specific read. So if the two of you are together, have been together before, or have just met, or haven't met, 
It speaks well. I like the vibe on this side of the table. My goddesses, the element of water. What are they feeling, this shapeshifter, towards this uh, slave in this uh, contract? Uh, Ace of Cups. See, this is, this is either a new beginning uh, for them with this person. It, that is very heart chakra. The Ace of Cups, happiness. It's like when they think about this, it's a happy. It's a seed, though. And that's why they want the stable foundation. And they're so lit. And they're thinking about, wow, if we could really, like, have that stable, you know, home. I get it. Right? Home, relationship, foundation, boundaries, that wisdom-based stuff. How it manifests in the outside world. We'll see in the extended on this side. Uh, but let's get that, uh, that fifth card down, the card of spirit, as I call to my goddesses of water sign of Scorpio powers of the West. What is the spirit card? The soul, the point of view, the voice of the soul who incarnated to play the role of the shapeshifter in this. What is that message from their soul? The sun card. The sun. This person, their soul, they've got the sun and the star, they've got the three of pentacles and the four of pentacles and the ace of cups. I'm going to say this person's ready, uh, but with the shapeshifter, they may be in a phase of really figuring out, seeing the potential in this, uh, uh, and, and with that ace there, certainly, and with the sun in the soul position, in the spirit position, it's saying, just be honorable. This is light. This is happy. There is not, I mean, you've probably heard it ad nauseum that when the sun card shows up in any spread, it lightens the effects of any other negativities. There really aren't any on this side, at least not at this stage. All right. Let's do the same uh, over here with the slave archetype. You can come sit with me, Melky. Come on up, buddy. Come on. No. No. Cats, what are you gonna do? Come up on this side so people can see you. <laughs> Mythic tarot, lower three chakras. This is from the outside looking in at them, or them, you on the inside uh, looking out at something. Uh, lower three chakras, something in the physical world. Root chakra groups, tribal situations, three or more people down to your favorite, you know, I'm a Yankees fan, I'm a Mets fan, I'm a whatever. Your political, everything, your genetic heritage. Second chakra, one-on-one -on -one relationship, which is what this is, uh, as well as two other things. Another person and or a thing. A uh, solar plexus, your relationship to yourself in the physical world. Um, your willpower, not your willpower, your, your honor code, what you will, what you won't, what you do, what you don't, don't, your gut intuition, your self-esteem, and all that jazz. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. As I call upon my gods of water, the sign of Scorpio powers of the West, please, five cards, element spread for the slave archetype in this Scorpio collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying, soulmate, contractor, maybe it's the cross watcher. Please, uh, what's their element of fire? What they yearn for, what they burn for, what their hearts desire, surrendering their will. So this is part of what they're shooting for here. And they've got the seven of swords. They do kind of want to sneak away from this a little bit. <laughs> they want to keep it stealth. They want to keep uh, preserve themselves. There are definitely some fears in place here. Um, yes, it can be seen as the cheating card. I don't know that that's going to pertain to everyone watching this, that they want to cheat. They may be in a situation where they want to cheat in order to do this. Uh, but it is a card of self-preservation. Uh, uh, seven of Swords. So they may want to protect themselves, but it's not a defensive stance. It's an elusive one. They're eluding something here. Power of Air. Uh, strategizing even uh, to an extent. Let's see. What's their element of earth with it? Because there's a very positive side of that, right? Steal the sword so they can't cut you up in the night. I get it. Please, uh, what's the element of earth? The fuel to feed the fire. 
to ground and manifest their heart's desire. The Five of Wands. I had a feeling this slave might be in another relationship with somebody. And they know in order for them to get what they want on this, to see this person, they're going to have to go through a little bit of a battle in the outside world. Now, the Five of Wands in the mythic tarot is part of the myth of Jason and the Argonauts, the quest uh, of the Golden Fleece. Here he is, with the help of Medea, uh, Right, Medea, uh, no, Ariadne is the one that married Dionysus. It's all Greek to me. Um, uh, they don't kill the dragon, they put it to sleep. All right, a little magic, a little potion, a little song, a little dance, a little uh, belladonna in their pants. Uh, uh, so there is some battles going on here. There is a conflict of will, but that's what's helping them do this. This could very much be somebody in conflict, in process, in order to get it together. Uh, to be with this person, but I'm going to say this shapeshifter here is like, yeah, like that. Hi, Milky, you are. Hello, my Taurus baby. <laughs> Cats. <laughs> you can't see him. All you probably see is floating green eyes every now and every now and again. Lay down, lay down, bugger. Uh, no, this this is certainly somebody who might be going through it a bit and has to go through that uh, that five of wands. Fives are changed numerologically, so they're they're going through something here, and maybe they can't be as upfront as they want to be because of external circumstances that they're hemorrhaging power to. Yeah, what's their element of air, please? Oh, if that was one card, I would have taken it. My gods, what is their element of air? What they predominantly think about uh, this contract with this shapeshifter. Nine of Cups. Nine of Cups. Big wish fulfillment. Big emotional satisfaction. Big, um, uh, I'm even getting, like, even emotional independence. Like, both are coming to it already fulfilled. Right? That's what this one wants. So, the intentions here are good. Um, but they might just not be ready yet. If what they want is to kind of seven of swords it for a little bit, a little sneaky sneaky, bide their time, preserve themselves to an extent, like, like even if you think of like seven of wands, it is that bit of that defensive boundaried stance. Uh, this is a bit more mentally this way. Hmm. Scoping and probing. Could be. What's their element of water, please? My gods, what do they feel about this? this contract. Yeah, Ten of Swords, that it needs resolution, right? Their, their thought on this on the outside is like, we need to complete this cycle, like a deep feeling in this person, because yeah, I know, Ten of Blades, right away, betrayal. It's not betrayal, it's the end of the cycle of air. So they want the seven because deep inside they're like, we've got to wrap this up. We've got to bring this to a resolution, a conclusion, an understanding um, before they can move forward emotionally. Now I will say, surrendering their will to the divine, right? Surrendering your power of choice to the divine with complete trusting. I don't know, show me. And that can be very active. It can very much be, all right, do it through me. Shit, guy, give me the clues, tips, and hints. Show me what you would have, where, this is straight up out of Course in Miracles. Show me what you would have me do, where you would have me go, what you would have me say, and to whom. Bam. Right? Say, I surrender, but it is an active surrender. It's not sitting on the couch waiting for shit to happen. You wait for the prompting to come, and that could uh, take uh, some time and a little stealth to do that, right? Because you want to be authentic in relationships like this, particularly when they're beginning, right? You don't want to, like, piss in the Cheerios too early on, if ever, or so to speak. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of thought here in the emotional thing of how to pull this off uh, with some sort of honorable alignment. All right. Uh, element of uh, spirit, please, my gods, of water, Scorpio, powers of the West. What is the spirit card, the point of view of the soul who incarnated to play the role of the slave in this happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying uh, Scorpio a soulmate contract with this shapeshifter? We got the chariot. Aries, uh, the light horse and the dark horse, inspiration and motivation, very emotional card. Soul is in, go for it. Get it together. <laughs> See, because inspiration and motivation, inspiration is the carrot, 
Motivation is the stick. Inspiration is the love. Oh, I love. And uh, motivation is shit. I got to get this done and this done in order to do that, right? And it's bringing them both together. It's when what you want to do and what you need to do are the same thing, right? You kind of bring them together. But sometimes what you want to do and you need to do pull you in different directions, right? Like getting out of bed in the morning. Sometimes it's like, I don't want to. <laughs> but hang on. I don't want to stay in bed. But it can. Um, look. Uh, this seems very, very typical in some ways, particularly post-pandemic, right? A person really clear on what they want, right? And they're not looking for forever and ever more necessarily. Maybe they are, maybe they're not, but they're very serious about something that has a nice, solid beginning, right? A nice, healthy, solid thing, because they are thinking about the security aspect of it, at least on the inside, right? Where here we've got somebody who very much wants this mentally. It's interesting. They've got water in their air and air in their water. So that nine of cups in, in the element of air is they're dreaming it. They're thinking it. They're, it's very, uh, it's a very, very satisfying wish uh, that they want fulfilled here. But ten of swords, there's just shit that has to be resolved here. I mean, it can be done with wisdom. It doesn't have to be, you know, slaughter. But as always we see, usually depending on the artist, the sun rising through the clouds on the horizon back here. So the storm is done, um, but perhaps the resolution is still in play here. And the soul with the sun and the chariot, this is saying move forward with this, both sides. But there you have it. Okay, uh, three more cards left. Uh, all oracles, uh, the whispers of love oracle, the voices of the higher self, the higher self of this one, the higher self of that one, nobody else, right? It's just you guys. Uh, let's see what the whisper of love is. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. As I call upon the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, what is the whisper of love, the piece of information, inspiration, insight most needed for this shapeshifter in this Scorpio timeless soulmate read and for the slave in this timeless, romantic, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying Scorpio soulmate contract? Uh, 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 love who you are, shapeshifter. Love who you are. You are a divine and wonderful person deserving all of the wonderful things that life has to offer. I think that's a real confirmation for whoever this shapeshifter is. To say, look, what you want, you can have this. You can have this. You are worthy of it. It's not a question of deserve. It's a question of worthy. You're ready for it. You're lit. You're lined up spiritually. And for what it is that they actually want is something that is solid and stable from the get-go. Right? That can be built upon or destroyed. Right? That's the journey for everybody. You never know how it's going to go. Every day is a risk. Every morning is the full card. Right? You step out of bed, you can step into anything. Um, but with the shapeshifter there, I think they really are, uh, like it says on the card, seeing the potential in this. Like they see the potential in everything and they're up for it. Here we have get to know each other with this slave. Uh, learning to meet another's need for love is important for a relationship to grow. Now, I did just get a flash on this, that if these two have danced together before, that's a dance together. That's a nice way of saying that you've been together before uh, in this life, and, and maybe other lives too, whatever. You do you. <laughs> I'm not reading your entire Akashic record. That's a private read. you got to book me for that and pay me for that uh, if I'm going to go to the library. Um, like, let's say 20 years has passed or something like that. Then we're really looking at you guys really need, you need to get to know who this person is. Uh, and they need to get to know who you are. That there's no re uh, need to be frontin' or frettin' here. Uh, I do feel like your souls are like, we're doing this. We're help we've been helping each other heal since we drew breath in this life before we even met, right? So, uh, so this is very doable. But what it takes, it feels like, this is the side. This is the side that's got the more internal, uh, well, at least external conflicts going on. But like I said, in the extended, we're going to flip-flop. One more card. 
one more card we are going to do, of course, the Macon Healing Mantra deck. Doesn't matter if you're the shapeshifter or the slave. Work the mantra. You're helping yourself heal. You're helping them heal, even if you don't know each other. And look, there's quantum stuff involved. Quantum entanglement. I don't know. Don't make me do math. Let me just read the card. Please take a nice deep breath. Trying to keep it light. <laughs> For a Scorpio read, good luck. Ask a witch. Breathe. Still point. Ooh, what's that feeling? So sudden and new. As I call upon the uh, Ascended Masters of Romantic Soulmate Contract Law, please. What is the perfect healing mantra for this Scorpio collective? Sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract uh, for this timeless read. Uh, a shapeshifter and a slave. We do not know the clause of their contract, but what is the perfect healing mantra? to help each other heal and heal this planet and anchor more true love onto this planet for the well-being of all. Inviting ecstasy, my absolute favorite card. I am worthy of all the pleasure my heart desires, guys. Come on. This is a worthiness issue. Inviting ecstasy, it's a great mantra. I have grapevines outside enchanted with that thing. Dionysus archetype, anybody? I'm going to read it from the boogie book. Inviting ecstasy, it's like, all right. I think I'm ready. I am worthy of all the pleasure my heart desires. Notice, Scorpio, other organs aren't mentioned. <laughs> Second chakra fiends, you. Chip steps, chains whips, inviting ecstasy. Did I just give you some weird science? Yes, I did. Yes, I just did that. If that's not enough for you to subscribe to my channel, I don't know what else you need. Inviting ecstasy. I am worthy of all the pleasure my heart desires. I thank you for asking. Uh, when ecstasy is invited, you feel aligned and ready to receive all the miraculous and joyful gifts of experience the universe is ready to provide you. Ecstasy acts as a cosmic green light that grants your destiny permission to enter. In other words, people want to wait for their destiny to enter before they feel ecstasy about it, and you can cultivate that feeling of ecstasy without biochemicals, I hear. <laughs> Interesting. Every day is a winding road. We get a little bit closer. Um, uh, in many instances, pain can be healed and released once a healthy relationship with pleasure is established. That's big. That's great big, huge, global big. Uh, this mantra is ideal for increasing self-worth, elevating levels of excitement, and allowing bigger dreams. And I think that's what's going on here. I think that's what's going on here. Because in the, in the element of air, not a cup's. Lovey dovey, snuggly wuggly. I love you. I love you. No, I love you more. No, I love you more. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, but definitely interesting thoughts in the mind. Some real resolution. It doesn't feel like it's going to be much longer, but it does feel like, like, can I just get away with this a little bit longer while I get this figured out uh, while you're getting to know each other? So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to do a little blessing and a summation at the same time. Uh, and then uh, we will chat a little bit at the end, and I've been enjoying doing goofy stuff at the end because I know people click off before that, so I just have at it and see what flies out my mouth. <laughs> However, the blessings we do here are for realsies on Drawing the Circle Productions YouTube channel, the torch of Archangel Ariel, ladies and gentlemen. Please take a nice deep breath. Mm -hmm. Still point. As one last time in this reading, I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine for the Scorpio collective sun, moon, rising Venus signs watching this video, receiving this reading. May they be blessed with all that they need in this happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract that the shapeshifter can embrace their skill at navigating through different levels of consciousness with an ability to see the potential in anything. Just wanting a nice, solid foundation, a lovely clay woman, a ruru, taking the dirt beneath their feet and turning it into something beautiful and practical. Because so they've got the alignment, they've got the inspiration, they've got the spirit in alignment following their guidance 
and grace. And when they think about it, they're thinking of home. They're thinking of security. This feels so solid. This feels so stable mentally. It looks, it thinks so stable because in their heart, they're like, really? Ace of Cups. It's not running over. It's a seed, but it will make its way to that 10 if they play their cards right. While the soul is saying, just go for it. Call it all out in the light. Be positive. Enjoy this. Be positive. See negative. Be positive. A minus. Shine your light at full capacity because that inviting ecstasy does do that. And so that uh, this slave archetype can surrender their power of choice to the divine with complete trust because indeed their emotions might be making things a little bit trickier uh, than they need to be. Hence that seven of swords that they want to take a little time, be a little stealthy, maybe go to a little counseling and nobody needs to fucking know about it because it's nobody else's business but theirs while they're dealing with some kind of conflict, a conflict of will. Theirs, I don't feel like it's between these two, It's but this one might want one and want it and this one might say, I can't right now. This could be all sorts of situations here where there is a bit of a battle, a challenge of wills, a uh, push me, pull me, one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake dynamic here. But when they're thinking about it, it's what they want. It is what their hearts desires, but they're, they're probably not so much ready to talk about it or do anything about it because we do have this ongoing resolution going on in their emotions. In terms of thoughts and beliefs, absolutely, that is there. Uh, and yet the soul says, keep going, keep going, channel your inspiration and your motivation, the carrot and the stick, because you can move this through. But in order to get it from, <laughs> to get this in balance, they got to surrender this to the divine so that the shapeshifter can just love who they are and invite in this ecstasy. And so that the slave archetype can get to know them to really understand what it is that love means to them so that they can both understand that they are worthy of all the pleasure their heart desires and anchor that frequency of ecstasy onto planet Earth really seriously in a time where if everybody could catch a whiff of that, crime would drop, war would drop, bodies would heal, minds would heal, hearts would, would heal. So may they be blessed with all that they need in this Scorpio collective, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract for their well-being and for the well-being of all and harm to none. As we will it, so let it be done. So would it be. And so it is. That was a good read. I liked it. Did you like it? Hit the thumbs up, Scorpio. Use your scorpion tail and hit that thumbs up. Help other Scorpios and cross watchers find it because that's how YouTube works apparently. And if you want more of me, I don't know, go ahead and subscribe. I dare ya. I double dog dare ya. Because I'm the fun one here. And if you want to go deeper and if you want the extended one price for all of them, then come play Patreon on Patreon.com operatic ending uh, uh, slash drawing the circle I'm the Archangel of Lions Mark Angelo Lions but you could call me Malin if you want a soul contract to read privately there is a video in the description box called booking a reading with Mal it's a YouTube video it's about 13 minutes or so I had fun doing it last year maybe I'll make a new one this year I don't know only the gods know that stuff and only the gods know what this card is and I won't either until I hit record in about 20 minutes from now because I need to take a break. Very beautiful read. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Wishing you the very best and the very blessed my beloved Scorps. Hell, farewell and blessed, blessed be.